This is bleeding the line, the gas line of the gas that's in the line. After you shut off the gas, you're going to run an appliance, like you guess, stove. And hopefully we'll see the gas dwindle and die. It is dying. This is a good sign. It indicates that the gas is off. Keep that gas appliance on um, and do it for a while. The gas is off and the lines are blood. We enter the area where we're going to be splicing off the line. In this particular installation, it's very simple. We've got a 22,000 BTU dryer and a 38,000 BTU hot water heater and uh, we've got an eight foot half inch line to the main line. The main line being a one inch and being approximately 45 feet long, probably 60 feet for safe measure. Um, please consult your table to see if the lines will deliver the flow you need and may need in the future. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off here and we're gonna put in a T connector and on the T we'll put this back on one of the ends and we'll put a pipe going through through that little hole back there into the main room. This is a really ghetto installation. Now we will measure our distances and cut the pieces to size. Make sure you water your rose bushes on the way around your property. There I wrench. On this half inch line, this fitting is one inch in diameter. So we're using a one inch wrench and attempting to grip it with that. And this pipe wrench down here, um, you can see that the jaws open like that. And you're gonna wanna apply torque using the bottom teeth. That'll clean that up real well. Those new pieces. Okay. Using the bottom teeth of that. And uh, these are going to move in opposite directions. So what I like to do is uh, pull them toward each other. I'm having trouble getting a grip on this thing. Get a grip. All right, going to pull these toward each other from basically the same location um, on the, uh, like, same distance from the center point, which is the pipe. So about here is pretty similar. There we go. It twisted. It broke loose. And now when we torque on this, it still will apply torque to the other fitting at the other side, but not so much now that it broke loose. slight smell of gas, but certainly less than uh, flammable um, levels. Um, the amount of scent in your gas line may be different from the amount of scent in my gas line, but I happen to have experience with um, a broken gas line and how it smelled, and um, this is not very strong, so I happen to know. Um, but do be, do be very careful when you smell. Smell natural gas and let it let it air out. 
before you do much to it. For cost purposes, we're going to use this old pipe. We found it, I guess, who knows where, and it's really rusty. And that's no good. You've got to clean up these pipes. It's reasonably clean now, um, but not usable. I'm going to take a uh, pretty caustic chemical, um, don't breathe the vapors kind of stuff, and I'm going to get in there with a metal toothbrush and I'm going to scrape out the rest of that crap. And then I'll let it dry for a while so there's absolutely no, no residue on it. You find your way to clean the tubes. Like acetone, I use it for a lot of cleaning purposes. You can get it free at your local chemical recycling center or your foreclosure hazardous waste processing facility should that processing facility be managed by people who wish to distribute wealth and goods instead of pay to put it in the garbage or get it recycled. I don't know how they'd pay to get rid of it. And then I'm going to use our metal toothbrush. Healthy gums. Brush your gums. And we've marked the pipe where we need to cut it. We're going to use a pipe cutter. And if you haven't used one before, you uh, put the wheels on the top, which help uh, keep your pipe in position. Rest them on the pipe. And then screw this thing until it comes in contact. Don't put a whole lot of pressure on it, but put some pressure on it. A little more than that. Give it a spoon, and every so often when it gets a little bit easier, keep spinning. When you're putting the die on the pipe, there's going to be part with a solid part where the pipe's diameter is uh, is there and that goes over the pipe first it functions as a guide and then it when these teeth cut they're cutting at the right um, they're cutting basically perpendicular to the pipe with this guide in place so slide your wrench over first put the guide through this is already partially pre-threaded so we're, get, we're getting ready to thread this pipe on a kind of awkward stand here, which isn't secured to anything. Uh, so we've got to hold it steady. And then we've got the dies in the center here. You can see them four on the edges there. Um, I'm going to put some, I, don't, I only have WD-40 here. I'm going to put some kind of lubricant on there for cutting purposes. And also on the pipe. We're going to continually reapply lubricant. We have too much metal stuck in the threads, uh, that's bad. Loosen it back up, back it up until it's loose, and you'll see a bunch of metal shavings fall off. Those are your cuts. Now it's pretty loose, let's tighten it back up again. <laughs> 